else have a testimony? God has been good to us and every one of us, whether we can tell that in everyday activities or not, if you are able to step back and look a little bit, you find out that we really are blessed. And it's not good to compare ourselves to others, I know, but you don't have to look very far across either our nation or certainly in many foreign nations and you find out that there are people that are are much less fortunate than us yes. and 
more than that, there are many that don't even know about Jesus. They're not celebrating the birth of Christ. They're not recognizing him as their savior. And so <clears throat> from that standpoint, we are really, really blessed. I have several scriptures that I intended to read anyway this morning. I don't know whether I'll get to all of them or not. It may not be necessary to, to turn to all of them, but I'd like to start in the book of Isaiah in chapter 7 and verse 14, and probably some of you would already know just what that verse is without looking at it. It is a prophecy concerning the coming of Christ as a baby, but if you'd like to stand with us for the reading of the of this verse anyway, we'll honor him. I'm going to read some other scriptures in a little while that maybe I'll leave you sitting for, but Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that's all I'm going to read from that portion, but I'll be referring to several other places, as I said. Shall we pray? Lord, today we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to understand the blessings that are ours, for truly you've been good to us. You've allowed us to see things that others only could see through faith, through eyes of faith. The things that were prophesied we've seen come to pass in many respects, in many aspects. But Lord, we know that there are still some things that you've promised that we can depend on you to fulfill. And so Lord, today as we celebrate the birth of Christ and the coming of Christ to be among us, to bring salvation to a world that is in such a need today, Lord, we look to you for the future and we leave it in your hands today. Thank you again for the salvation that, brought, that you brought down to mankind. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I'm going to be turning to, <clears throat> excuse me, the book of Acts. And a very similar scripture is recorded in the book of Matthew. But Acts chapter, not Acts, Luke. <clears throat> Luke chapter 10 and verse 24, and maybe I should read verse 23 as well, but this is Jesus here. It says, and he turned himself, or no, he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. You could interpret that a lot of different ways. Jesus was, was here in Luke. This is following the place where he sent out the disciples and the 70 that he sent out to perform miracles and all those things that, that they did. And they came back so amazed that that. All these things happened, and they were able to accomplish all these things. And, and Jesus said then that, that there have been many that wanted to see those things. Well, the only reason that they, that they were able to see them then was because Jesus came, was born, grew up, and by now he's in his, in his time of ministering, to the, at least to the time where he's speaking to these disciples. And... He's letting them know that they're seeing some things that, that were really historic, that the prophets and kings of the old times had longed and, and looked forward to the time that this kind of thing could happen, but it was happening right in their time, that Jesus had given them power to go out and, and to heal people of sicknesses and to cast out devils and, and all of those things that they were doing. But I believe that it it had a greater reference to the fact that Jesus was there in person. Now, I don't know how you feel about it. I think that there's a lot of people feel like that, that those that were alive when, when Jesus were, was born 
We're more privileged than we are because now he's gone to heaven and, and we're here without him. But Jesus himself told us that he would go away and send a comforter and the comforter would remind us and teach us of the things that Jesus himself taught us. To the extent that Christ came as a human being, he was limited in his humanity to being what we as humans could be. I know that there are places where, where we read that he traveled from one place to the next and, and it seemed like that he just got there and nobody really knew how he got there. But yet, when he was there, well, he was, he was only in one place at a time. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that teaches us and reminds us of him and tells us about him can be with every one of us wherever we are. And that was the message that Jesus was telling his disciples there in John long chapter 14 and beyond where he was going to go away and send a comforter. And so really today, if you're going to compare, we are more privileged even than the disciples were in their day. If we know Jesus today. And the only way that we can know him is through the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so, now I'd like to turn back in the book of Luke to chapter 2, and familiar passage, and probably uh, you read it every Christmas time, but uh, I love to read this because it tells about some old people that had lived almost their whole lives hearing the prophecies of the Old Testament as the one I read from Isaiah, but there were many, many others. And if you want to go back and, and read some of them, well, uh, Jesus even told us in the book of John that, that Abraham longed to see their day. And then it, he goes on to say, and he did see it. But of course, the reference is that he saw it through eyes of faith, that Abraham had faith. We read about Abraham's faith in the book of Hebrews. And, and so Abraham had longed to see it, but it was only through eyes of faith. And uh, another one, Jacob, one of the old, old timers also that, that saw salvation. I believe the, the reference in Genesis 49 says that, Jacob says, I have waited for thy salvation. It goes on a little bit more, but he's waiting for the salvation of what? In his day, it was only, only a, an expectation, if you will, of the salvation that was going to come. Balaam talks about it in, in Numbers 24. It says, I shall see him, but not now. And Balaam was prophesying not really in his own strength because he was, he was trying to curse God's people, but God wouldn't allow him to, and God gave him this prophecy, and in spite of himself, he was, he was prophesying, and a beautiful prophecy where really he wasn't intending to say that, but that's what came out. I shall see him, but not now, and goes on to talk a little bit more about the salvation that was going to come, and David talks about the desire that he had and his desire for Jesus to come. And down in Ephesians, the writer to the Ephesians, of course, and I believe taking this from, from what Jesus had introduced them to, but uh, he says, in other ages, this was not made known. Talking about Christ's coming. And in Peter, he talks about the uh, salvation the prophets have inquired and searched for diligently and there are many many other places where it, it talks about either retrospectively or or at the time looking forward to the coming of Christ but that was something that was a theme through throughout scriptures that the Messiah was going to come that Jesus was going to come and then down to the time that Christ did come there were so many that just could not accept it on that basis. They couldn't believe that a king would come to be born as a baby. But through that, there were two 
devout people, one named Simeon and one named Anna. It's given to us in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, starting at verse 25. And I'm going to read this. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And these two men, these two people, Simeon and Anna, elderly in age, but had looked longingly and expectantly to the time that Christ, the Messiah, was going to come. And now, in their old age, they're seeing it come to pass. And Simeon's words was, now let me depart in peace. I've seen the Christ. I've seen the Christ. And I think that, that the challenge for us today is to make sure that we don't give up in our expectations of seeing others know the Christ. And certainly, if we know of others that don't know the Christ, then I hope that somehow there's, there's something planted in them that they cannot die until they know the Lord's Christ. They cannot die until they have seen him and know him as a personal Savior. Now, I, I realize that this was after the birth of Christ, and we're leading up to the, to the celebration of the birth of Christ today. But I believe that this longing that Simeon and Anna had had been for many years. And it was a, it was a fulfilling of, to them of what the Holy Ghost had kind of revealed, that, that the time was drawing near. Now, I don't know what that implies for our future. And as we go forward, I think there's some of us that are, that are thinking that the signs of the times are right, for something else to happen. And I don't know if this is the time that the Lord is going to come back for his people or not. But I want to be ready, just like Simeon and Anna were ready, waiting for, for what the Lord had for them, that they were ready. And when, when Christ was brought in, even as an infant, they recognized him immediately. And they were drawn to that because they had been looking expectantly for it. And may we live in such a way that our expectations reveal to us a desire to see the Lord come. And that we live in such a way that when he comes in our midst and when, when we're somewhere, maybe in church, maybe elsewhere, where the Spirit of God comes in our midst and we can recognize, wow, that's God. Or when we're reading the scripture and something's revealed to us and we think, the Holy Ghost must have revealed that to me. And our, our hearts are in expectation for the Lord doing something for us. Now I realize that the, the popular stories that we, we give about the coming of, 
of Christ, the birth of Christ. We talk about the preparations that were made, and, and maybe last week we talked a little bit about that with John the Baptist coming to prepare the way and so on. But, but Mary and Joseph were prepared, and everything was in place that when the, when the event happened and the angels began to announce to the shepherds and, and the shepherds came, the wise men came, and, and those that were looking found him. Those that were in, in that kind of expectation. But on the other hand, you take people like Herod the king that was right there. And even when he had the tip off that the, that the wise men were looking for him, and he inquired and, and found out from his wise men where this was going to happen. But yet, we don't ever find Herod bowing down to worship. We don't ever find Herod declaring that, well, I have found the Christ. And so, I think that today, there are many people that get busy, get tied up in, the, in their way of living that, they're not really looking for Christ anymore. They're just living. But may we live with that kind of expectation because one of these days it's going to be a reality. Whether it's through our own death or whether it's through the, the rapture of the saints, I can't tell you when that's going to be. I can't tell you that I'm going to live to see the rapture even. If we go the way of all the earth, we'll probably pass away and die but even then I shall see him I shall see him that's what the scriptures have taught us and and the coming of Christ was just to help us to be prepared to see him in eternity and so as we celebrate the coming of Christ we understand that it's more than just a baby that was born and gone and that happened 2,000 years ago and doesn't have any relevance for us to no, know that's not the that's not the case he's more relevant to us today than he was even then the prophets had looked for him and expected him up to the time that he was born but when Jesus said blessed are you because your eyes have seen the things that others just dreamed about wasn't he saying they were pretty blessed people they were they were pretty privileged people and I think today, if we were honest, we'd have to say to ourselves, I've been pretty privileged. I've been blessed to grow up being taught about Jesus. I've been pretty privileged to know Jesus as my own Savior. I've been privileged to have the Word of God that I can rely on. And I think that we're still pretty blessed even in spite of whatever persecutions may come we haven't we haven't gone through anything compared to what some of the old prophets did in defense of their of their beliefs and i'm not suggesting that we want to do that i'm not suggesting that that was that that's what's in store for us even but i'm just saying that even if we had to do that we'd still be blessed because we know who jesus is today and i'm thankful for that May the Lord bless us and keep us close to him as we celebrate the birth of Christ. May it be more than just a physical birth, but may it be a spiritual recognition and a spiritual rebirth maybe in, in our midst that we sit up and take notice that, you know, we are privileged. We are blessed. Amen. All right. Thank you for your attendance and your attention here this day.